Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to, uh, you know, a new segment, a new portion of the, the Golden Goblet series. Spelunky has come and gone. And we're, we're moving on to Escape from Tarkov. If you've never seen this game before, you don't know what it is, um, you know, and you have any questions, get in the comments below. Um, and... I'll explain anything to the best of my abilities, or I'm sure anybody that's watching along that is familiar with the game would would answer stuff. Um, because it's not the most straightforward game. Um, at least right off the bat. Uh, but you know that's kind of what makes it uh, a fun game. So uh, we're gonna be playing it for the next seven days, which should mean seven episodes. And I think, uh, yeah, we'll be doing seven different maps, right? I think. I'll have to double check uh, on this because it's, uh, well, you know, myself, uh, Ryan, Northern Lion, and Dan Giesling uh, playing it. And we're, we're competing against each other each day. Dan is the one who's kind of orchestrated the, the order of the maps and, and the, the general parameters, which are pretty... Um, uh, pretty straightforward. Basically, we all are on day one, which is today. We're going to be loading into the uh, customs map as a scav. So, for those unfamiliar with the game, there's kind of like two ways you can load into a map. Right? Um, a scav is is a, a random set of weapons and, and gear and all that stuff that the game gives you for free. So you don't pay for it, but it is also random. And sometimes it might be a pistol, it might be a shotgun. Um, in my case here, it's, uh, it's an SKS, but also with a, a little suppy, a little suppressor on the end, which is not... The, the the SKS itself, I'd say, is a, is a fairly common weapon uh, for a scav, but getting the suppressor is is not, so that's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, and then all the other gear that he's wearing, the, the sunglasses and the hat and the, you know, there's different rigs, sometimes you get a backpack, so on and so forth. Um, usually it's nothing too, too crazy, but it's free. So anyways, we're all going to be loading in. We'll all have a different scav um, get up. We won't be playing on the same map. I mean, theoretically, it's possible if we all started recording and loading into the map at the same time and we're on the same servers and yada, yada, yada. But it's like probably a 99% chance that, um, you know, we won't be in the same games. Um, and yeah, you load in and you want to go you want to get as much loot as you can or maybe not as much but you want to get the best uh value of loot and then exit and then sell it and then whoever has the most money from all the stuff sold including the you know what you see here on my guy you know the weapon and the rig and and all that you sell all of that and whoever has the most amount of money wins that day trick though that uh, I'm gonna have to remember is that in the game there's also like a whole economy there's a flea market and there's uh, kind of like um, you know computer traders and stuff like that so you can make money from different areas and different amounts and stuff like that we are selling everything to the one uh, dealer or trader um, known as the fence so he'll buy anything and everything pretty much, but he gives you very little. But at least that way, it's kind of like a more consistent way of, of um, doing it. Anyways, I have to focus for one second here, and uh, I'm going to kill this guy because I want his loot. Alright, good start. Um... I'm going to try to take pretty much everything and I'll only drop stuff unless like I have to. And then I'll also try to decipher like, oh, this is worth, you know, 
more than that so i'll drop that thing but you want to i want to get out as much with as much as i can and, and not have to worry too much because ooh, if i don't get out alive i don't get to keep stuff so now let me first see okay i've got 17 minutes crossroads which is that way And then uh, between the rock passage, which is that way. So another thing about this game is like each map, it's not like multiple people can win, basically. Um, it just means you get in and then you get out alive. <laughs> um, and there's different areas where you can exit the map. And technically, like they're always the same exits overall, but they're not av all available. Right, so maybe let's say there's like 10 different places you could exit this map. When you load in, it'll just give you a few of them. And you have to go to like, you know. I think that's... It's not at dorms, but it's like... Yeah. Um, so yeah, and some of the exits, you know, they require special things. Maybe you have to pay a little money to leave or you need to use a special key or... Stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot to this game that I'm. It's gonna be hard for me to explain while I'm trying to compete. Um, you know, I'm not the best at multitasking, but basically, I want to stay alive. I want to get as much loot as I can, and I want to get out and sell it, and hope that the what I sell <laughs> is a uh, is a greater value than what um. And what others sell? So this area here, dorms, um, can sometimes have uh, a scav boss. Different maps, not all of them, but most of them have a scav boss who also has like guards. So they're uh, what you, NPCs, right? They're not real players, but they have really good gear. Um, There's somebody in here. Probably above me on the third floor, where there is a, um, marked room. And if you have a key for that, which I, as a scav, I don't have one unless I find one off a player. Um, yeah, you can't access the room without it. But if you can... It's not always guaranteed you're going to get great stuff, but the the loot pool there is pretty good. Um, but like I was saying, there's also, you know, the scab boss and the guards, and they all have good... They all have good stuff, too. So sometimes people will just come here just to, like, kill them and get their guns and their armor and all that stuff. They don't even care. I mean, obviously, they're going to check the marked room and other valuables, usually, but... And, of course... I'm pretty sure I did hear somebody here, but... Of course, you're also going to run into other players here, too, because everybody's like, ooh, I want to... Go and get that stuff. And sometimes the players will have really good stuff. And if you win, then you get their stuff too. And it's just, it's lovely.
That said, I'm not going to stick around here because um, there are no bodies, which means I cannot loot. I guess there could have been a person on the first floor, but... Always check the other building, and then the alternative is that sometimes the scab boss is at the, the there's a gas station, and they can be there, but they could also not spawn it at all. I don't know what the percentage chance is. I've been told it's like 30 some odd percent that the scab boss will actually Spawn. That is open, so this has been loaded. But I'm not seeing any bodies. Oh. Wow, oh, this guy's probably picked clean, but you never know what you're going to get. And I will take what I can. I mean, that's not really going to be worth much, but... Um, I think since I have crossroads as an exfil, I'm going to go back that way. Mm. So it's not really worth much money. Did it? Sure. Every bit helps. Yeah, the other thing with loading in as, as a scav, in the top right there, you can see how much time I have left. There's 10 minutes, which, you know, obviously I spent, what, five minutes, six, seven minutes just kind of getting over there and being slow. But, like, it's a bit of a, a gamble because if you do get in there low and slow and, and maybe there's somebody there and you get you kill them, you get some good stuff and... Who knows, all the guards and other players, corpses could have been there. Even if they're picked partially clean, you know. There's enough bodies, people can't carry everything. So, even the stuff they leave behind can go for a, uh, a good chunk of change sometimes, you know. Or even just help you... Um, survive or or you know maybe it's still better than what you had all right so there's like a warehouse over here that usually has a good amount of scavs in there i'm sure we'll find a few uh dead corpses but the warehouse itself isn't always looted I would say it doesn't have spectacular loot, but sometimes you get some goodies. And if we do see a couple fresh scavs, we can get some kills. Sometimes they have uh, some nice guns on them. Maybe they'll have like a rare key or something. This game, it can, for, as far as the loot, sometimes it can come down to a single... I think I heard a scav in there. Yeah, sometimes it can come down to like a single item, you know? One key can be worth a million rubles. All right, before I go over there, let's check in here. Quickly, quickly. I actually don't know which is worth more, but the splint is more useful if I have an accident. Uh, okay. Eight 
eight minutes. Let's get an angle over here, see if we see anybody. And the thing is as well, scavs kind of move in and out of this area. They'll kind of like walk through. They'll come in that way, they'll come in that way, you know. They'll go in the building. There obviously is a dead one there, but... Um, it doesn't mean this place is looted. It just means, like, PMCs, you can, you can spawn in back there and right over here. So they'll move through this area. Um, to get to other areas, like where I was before the dorms. That's a pretty hot and heavy area a lot of the time, so. All right. Let's see if this, ah, it's looted. Did they loot the jackets though? Me think so. Looks like they looted all of this too. Bob, that's... That's worth some money, maybe? I don't know. Not a lot, but I think more than... Uh... Yeah, that's already... Well, wait. Just because it's open doesn't mean they actually took. Is the thing. Alright, so if they looted that, I could almost guarantee... That they looted the crates inside. But maybe they went in there and then they got killed by a scav and they never looted them, right? You don't know the whole story. You can make assumptions. Oh, there's another body there. Um, I think these are definitely worth more. I mean, yeah, I don't have a... It's just... Terrible, 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 terrible amounts of loot. Um, that door is closed. Um, it requires a key, and there are some computers and stuff up there, so unfortunately we cannot... People are shooting way over there. Back where I came from. Oh, here's a scab. Okay. Um, how much is that actually worth? Um... It's a, it's a crappy helmet, but I'm just kind of thinking, I don't know. It's got to be worth more than a pack of cigarettes, eh? But this game is funny like that. Alright, hopefully he's got... Uh... You never know, this guy could have like a super rare key on him. Atas, <laughs> oh god. Uh... And Taz ammo. All right, well, there is a chance we get some more scavs in here, and there are a couple loot spawns, and we have four minutes, which is still plenty of time as long as you don't get into any sort of uh, situations, because our exfil is right back over there. Okay, I know the loot is on the other side of this wall. I thought I heard somebody and... Perhaps I did. This one might have some... Nope. It's a medical one. Medical supplies can uh, 
like the higher higher end ones can go for a decent chunk of change so I figured I'd check that while I was here um it's a bit of a bit of a bummer you know I'll be honest with you but I am still alive, you know, I don't want to jinx it, but <laughs> at least I have my health. I don't think anything's in there, no. Now, the other thing is there are a couple more loot spawns up here. This is right where the exit is, so I want a very, like, check them and please 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 um ammo's not worth it but what's the least expensive thing I've got here oh maybe like that I don't know the bandage is worth more than that one there's another one right here, but I'm extracting, so I gotta check it very quickly. Okay. I want the filter. Uh, I'll just get rid of you. I definitely want that. Okay, and then there was the grenade, which I want. Um, let's just get rid of... I don't like that. Maybe the cap. That's only worth a couple grand, so I'm not going to take it. <sighs> Actually, very quickly, just look this way. You never know when you're gonna find a body. Ah, <sighs> jeez, jeez, jeez. You know, it's it's one of those like, I feel like maybe instead of stopping at the dorms, taking so much time and then coming back, maybe I should have just kept going to the other end of the map. You know, there's some some uh, some okay stuff there too but you know it, you never really truly know what's gone on because you're loading in as a scav so half of the the game has already occurred a lot of deaths a lot of action and you, you don't always know what what has been looted what hasn't so it's a game of chance but uh that said getting a couple kills uh isn't bad it's not like i came out empty-handed but i'm really curious to see what all this stuff is going to sell for to the fence so um we're selling it all and it all gets sold to the fence that way it's consistent between myself uh dan and ryan you know but typically, you don't want to sell anything to the fence unless nobody, none of the other traders will buy it. So just so you know, if you've never played this game, there's a flea market, which is like the, all the items and stuff in the game, like real players can sell them and buy them here. So the, the prices, I know what you're looking at is kind of a jumble mess, but um, when you get to certain areas, like the prices, people can set the price to whatever they want. It's a whole supply and demand kind of thing. And there are quests in the game that often require you to to have certain items and things of that nature too so um you know people can justify selling them for more because people will buy them because it's for a quest and oh i just you know i just need this one thing if i buy this one thing i'll have that quest done so it's kind of interesting but these are the npc uh dealers traders and so you know the therapist you buy and sell um kind of like medical things typically to her she'll buy some other stuff as well but she'll give you really good prices but she only buys generally kind of medical type of stuff you know uh skier and the mechanic you know they buy kind of weapon parts and stuff like you know some of the others will buy more like armor and rigs and backpacks all that kind of stuff the fence this shady guy 
He's just like, you know what? I'll, I don't care. I'll buy it all. So, actually, let me do one thing quickly. Um, there was no rule given that I couldn't disassemble weapons and sell them. And I know Dan is going to do that. And you make more money in this game when you disassemble a weapon and sell the parts individually than if you were to just um, sell the whole thing. Uh, just make sure we take everything out. So yeah, like normally I you would divvy up all this stuff. So these this is all the items we got from that raid. Um, normally you would divvy this up and... Uh, and be like, all right, well, these weapon parts I'm going to sell to the, you know, skier and all oh, this ammo I'll sell to the mechanic and, oh, uh, this key that, that I can get m more money from the therapist for that, so on and so forth. But the fence, you know. So let me just, wait, hold on. I'm sorry for going back and forth. I just got to double check. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're good. So trading, fence. And then you go sell. That. That's worth eight grand. That's worth forty four hundred. This hat is worth fifty eight hundred. Um Yo, the key's worth ten thousand. Which one was that again? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I've already got it. Um Suppressors worth thirteen thousand. Okay, that helmet probably wasn't worth holding on to. <laughs> because, but you think of it too, like uh, like uh, you know, price or value per slot. So this takes up four slots, and it's worth uh, you know, twenty two, almost twenty three hundred, right? So if you divide that by four, it's worth you know, five hundred and fifty, um, uh, you know, rubles in this case per square, whereas um, you know, this flashlight here is worth, um, you know, 2,700 and it only takes up one square, right? Um, so the, the, the interesting thing about this game is you're trying to loot and not get killed and, and shot, but you also have to think of, oh, you know, uh, is this thing worth more than that? Or how do I fit this into my container and blah, blah, blah. There's like so many, um, different elements so it's uh it's kind of neat like that but you know i can't uh see like this is actually not worth <laughs> hardly hardly uh the space at all but you know but that whiskey which you're like why is that whiskey worth fifteen thousand? you know it's just the way it is um let's just put it all in there no space Okay, I just need to make sure this money. 101,512. Where did it go? It's supposed to put it up here. 101,512. So you know what I'm going to do? It probably went into this pile. 101,512. Except, I'll just put it there, and then uh, now we can continue selling the rest of that. Fifty-eight forty, deal. Where the heck is my money going? Maybe it's going in a wallet, or maybe one here. I didn't actually notice how much. Whatever, fifty-eight forty. And if I got something wrong, you know. Um, Obviously, post it in the comments. I don't want to be cheating or anything like that, but there you go. Um, so all things considered, I wouldn't say that's too bad. Like I said, the fence, he'll buy anything, um, but he gives you less money for it. I should have probably shown you what some of that stuff would go for if we had taken it to one of the other... Um, traders like we had one of these we sold for like 4800 
obviously she sells them for more than she's actually going to buy them for, but she sells them for almost 25,000 and we sold it for under 5,000. So we probably would have gotten like, I don't actually know, but maybe like half of the, that or something. I, I never really pay attention to that kind of stuff, but so it's, um, yeah. I mean, even in the case where I had, I already had a bandaid on me, but this is like a one use bandaid. And then I found this one, which is a two use bandaid. So you can see it's worth a few hundred more. Not that big of a deal, but like if you can only carry one or something or, you know, it's an easy, quick decision to make. I know this is the same thing, but that the green one, the two use is just better. It has a higher value. So it's like, well, you just swap them out, right? So um anyways yeah i mean that's um that's the first episode so i made out with a uh, hundred and seven thousand three hundred and fifty two rubles uh mew got a couple kills um you know we hit six digits so that's it's not great but it's not bad either so um i'm pretty happy with it uh anyways we'll see how i do compared to Ryan and Dan on this day. And then tomorrow we'll be going, I believe it is the shoreline map. We'll be uh, we'll be doing the, the same thing there with a scav run. So we'll get in with some random items or random, uh, you know, gear and weapon and uh, do it all over again. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Please, um, you know, give support uh, not only to me, but to, to everybody. Um, involved in this it's a it's a team effort so uh if you like what you see go and go and like each video that's uh that's all i ask but uh anyways i'll see you in the next one until then peace out